Hello everybody. It's that time of day again. It's story time. I've got my frumpy reading sweater on. I'm comfortable. There we go. Are you comfortable? Good. Good. Let's see what we got to drink today. Hmm. Nice glass of cool water. Okay, well let me get the book. We'll be ready. Okay, let me get some reading glasses here. Okay, this book is called The Cat with Two Homes, A First Book of Opposites, written by Tim Healy. Ollie was a stray cat, and a very ordinary cat at that. His coat was no particular color, a sort of grayish, brownish, stripy tabby. He was not especially thin or fat, or especially big or small. All he was, well, ordinary. But Ollie, the ordinary cat, had seen enough of the world to know that it can be an extraordinary place. For example, at some times of the year, the weather is hot, and at other times, it is cold. Some places are for snoozing, are rather soft, and others are hard. Some dogs run very fast, and others are very slow. Some places are noisy, and others are quiet. Often as he prowled around the streets and gardens of his town, all he would find windows shut. But sometimes he would find a window open, and sometimes he would sneak inside to look about. One day, Ollie slipped into the home of the Tubbs family. It was very untidy in there. Ick! squealed Mrs. Tubbs. There's a cat in the living room. Look, everyone, look! Don't be frightened, the poor thing, said Mr. Tubbs. He looks hungry. Here, Puss Puss. I wasn't trying to frighten him, dear, said Mrs. Tubbs. I merely said, eek! But you're right. That cat has not been properly fed. And she went off to the kitchen to see what food she could find. The Tubbs were short and chubby. They were a kind family, too. And from that day onward, they allowed Ollie to make their home his home. Every morning Ollie dropped in and was given an enormous breakfast. The tubs thought of Ollie as a rather skinny cat and they laid out huge amounts of food. There was always there was much more than Ollie could eat and he was always so full up that he left some of it. The tubs did not know Ollie's real name. So they decided to call him Slim. They even bought a feeding dish and wrote the name upon it. Ollie, the ordinary cat, did not spend the whole day hanging around the tub's house. He liked to roam, and around midday he would often find himself near the home of the Pike family, who lived in the same street, but on the opposite side of the road. One day, Ollie had a fight with a neighbor's cat and hid in the pike's garden to lick his wounds. Mrs. Pike found him there and brought him into the house. Look at this poor stray, Mrs. Pike said to her husband. See, he's been in a fight and needs someone to look after him. Humph, said Mr. Pike. He looks well enough, looked after to me. Just see what a plump fellow he is, a real old roly-poly. The Pike's house was quite unlike the Tubbs' house. It was very tidy. The Pikes themselves were rather tall and thin. They were a kindly family, and they did not like to think of Ollie having no home to go to. From that day forward, they gave Ollie freedom of their house. 
Every lunchtime, Ollie would drop in and was given a midday meal. The Pikes thought of Ollie as a rather plump cat and only laid out tiny quantities of food. That cat, said Mrs. Pike, is much too fat, but we can't give him nothing at all. And because the Pikes did not know Ollie's real name, they called him Podge. They even bought a feeding dish and wrote the name upon it. So, it was that Ollie became a cat of two homes. For many years, he lived in or about the same neighborhood, without anyone suspecting his secret, until one afternoon, one very ordinary afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Tubbs met Mr. and Mrs. Pike on the street. Ollie happened to be snoozing on the wall nearby. Look at that lazy creature, said Mrs. Tubbs fondly. He's our cat, you know. Always comes when by for breakfast. We call him Slim. But he's our cat, said the astonished Mrs. Pike. He has his lunch with us. We call him Podge. A cat with two homes, chuckled Mr. Tubbs. A cat with two names, laughed Mr. Pike. And their laughter, laughter wakened Ollie from his sleep. He licked his lips and yawned. Then he stretched himself so he, that he looked very long and thin. Then he puffed out his fur so that he looked rather short and fat. And then he darted off. He jumped over one garden gate and he sneaked under another. He climbed up upon a roof and down the other side. He dashed into a big drain pipe and came out the other end. Where was he going? Well, because it was late in the afternoon and would soon be time for his evening meal, Ollie was going off to eat at his third home. Third home? Oh yes, didn't I tell you? Ollie has a third home and it's the one he likes best of all. It must be a really snug home too, for he goes there every night. But where is that home? It's a secret known only to Ollie. It's a bit of a mystery to me. The end. Well, Ollie was definitely an interesting cat, wasn't he? Well, that's the end of the story. I hope you have yourself a great day. You take care of each other. Take care of yourself. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.